So let's just talk about formulating answerable questions. The big messages are that there are different types of questions. We need to be able to structure them with a PICO. Can I ask who's heard of PICO before? Okay, who's heard of variants of PICO, so PO questions, for example? Okay, a few people. So let me go through them. <clears throat> PICO is a very useful way of breaking down the questions um, and it's particularly useful for an intervention question, a therapy question. But I'm going to show you that we can think about other types of questions using the same structure. Sometimes we're just interested in the outcome itself. What's important to patients? And this I'd call a, a PO question mark question. We don't know what the outcomes are that are important to patients. Let me give you one specific example of this. Patient with rheumatoid arthritis. What do you think the most important symptom or problem for a patient with rheumatoid arthritis is? Pain. Okay, that's number two. Sorry? Function. Yep, number three. Cosmetics, deformity. I think that's about number five, yep. Anyone know what number one is? Stiffness, pain. No, that's probably number four, I think. Going to the loo. Going to the loo. Probably number six or seven. <laughs> Amanda, as a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, do you want to tell us what number one is? Exhaustion, tiredness. Fatigue, yes. And the way, th this is now part of the measures that they use in rheumatoid arthritis, but it actually took the rheumatologists a long time. There's a group called OMERACT, which has been trying to standardise the measures that they use for clinical trials of rheumatoid arthritis. And I think it was in their third or fourth meeting that they decided to include patients. And the patients said, oh, your tools are great, but they leave out our worst symptom, our biggest problem. And they said, what's that? And they said, fatigue, exhaustion. And I went, oh, my goodness. They then did a survey of patients to find out the frequency of that problem. And indeed, the patients were right. It was the number one problem. So the second type of question you might have is about the prevalence or incidence. You need to know what the phenomena are first, and often that's qualitative research. You need to find out what's going on. Then you can start to quantify it. So we could have asked, what's the prevalence of fatigue, pain, dysfunction, etc., in patients with rheumatoid arthritis? Either as a snapshot, what's it like it now? That's a prevalence snapshot. Or at incidence, how does it develop over time? So they're both PO-type questions. Um, Prevalence being a, just a, a, a simple PO and the incidence one, you add the T of the PICO. Okay, so we might ask the question, how common is an earlobe crease? Has anyone got an earlobe crease? Can you just check your neighbour to see if they've got one? <laughs> it shows you a picture of one here. Normal earlobe, earlobe crease. Okay, they actually increase with age. They've been said to be a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, but actually the confounder here is age, that they just become more common with age, and of course cardiovascular disease does as well. So it's a potential confounder, so sorting out that as a risk factor, we need to know this prevalence by age as well. Okay, the next type of question is a PICO question, and here we've got the IC in. So I wanted to emphasise that not all questions have all four elements of the PICO in them. They can just be simple PO questions or even the PO question mark ones. Next type is a risk factor. Do patients with rheumatoid arthritis have a higher mortality? How do we tell that? How would you know with a risk rheumatoid arthritis patients? What study would you do to do that? Okay. okay, can you, not, not using the word cohort, can you just describe what you'd actually do? Follow up the patient from the time of diagnosis until death and see how many of those patients die. Compared to another group. Compared to another group. Okay, so the patient group would be patients with the initial diagnosis, that's the inception cohort, of rheumatoid arthritis would be the indicator here versus a group that don't have that, no rheumatoid arthritis, and we'd have to argue about what the appropriate controls are, and the outcome would be? Mortality, More de mortality death. Okay, 
No randomization involved in that, by the way, because here we're just interested in the natural history. Do they have a higher mortality rate if you've got rheumatoid arthritis? If they did, we could start to say, what's the causation of that? Think about that. But the first thing we want to know is, is this true? Do they have a higher mortality? So that's a, a prognostic factor. Treatment might be, do patients with rheumatoid arthritis benefit from methotrexate? So what's the population? <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis, what's the intervention? <laughs> Comparator? No, no methotrexate in the outcome. <coughs> Pain? <Benefit>. And fatigue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fatigue, dysfunction, all of those things that we said, we want to measure all of them. Which things does it actually change? It may reduce pain, but not change the incidence of the fatigue, the, the, the flu-like episodes that patients get. And that would be of interest to patients. Okay, and so it's the same structure, but here we'd probably like to have a randomised trial as our best evidence. Patients randomised to methotrexate or no methotrexate. Okay. So one important message there is the best evidence will depend upon the type of question. If we're just interested in the phenomena, what do patients with rheumatoid arthritis experience? What troubles them? What outcomes are they interested in? That's qualitative research. We sit down with a bunch of people and ask them. Okay, if we want to know the frequency of that problem, then we want to get a sample of patients with the condition and ask them about them, and preferably a representative sample. And a way of getting that is usually a random sample. I didn't talk about this one, but this is also a PICO structure. Um, does the person have the problem? How do we diagnose rheumatoid arthritis? And we could look at CRP or other new techniques of diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis and compare that with a gold standard. That's a PICO structure as well. The prognosis, we said, that's a follow-up or inception cohort, the mortality from rheumatoid arthritis. And finally, we want to fix the problem. And this is probably our most common question in practice, by the way. When people have kept logbooks or looked at questions sent in to services, about 70% of our questions actually turn out to be about therapy, which is why there's a special emphasis in um, evidence-based medicine on randomised trials. But for all these others, you don't need randomised trials. In fact, they wouldn't be as good at answering the question. For this, the randomised trial is the ideal thing.